the next talk, which will be given by Łukasz Rudzinski. He is approaching. He is, uh, Łukasz is one of the PhD student of Professor Igor Lewinsky Bimola. He's now working on it. He's now working on it. Thank you very much. So let me start with some of my memories from the old faculty. There was this input colloquium and as a student I attended the talk by Maciej Lewenstein. I was very surprised because first 20 minutes of the talk was about his funding. How much of funding he has in Barcelona and what are different sources. N nowadays I also have this slide which, which shows it. <laughs> <laughs> but because of today we go directly to the point. So I'm going to present the last part of results we have with my PhD student who is now to submit the thesis, Tomasz Minowski. Also the paper is in a special issue. The topic which is in the thesis of, of Tomasz starts with Robert Alicki. I met Robert yesterday. He was very happy that there is the celebration coming today. He was also very happy that, that the professor is in such a good shape in this age. So I sent his greetings. I also sent the greetings of all the other people from Gnesek, like Mariusz Zhukowski. So all this, I see all the generation who claimed that, that they were always influenced by, by the professor. So, so, so Mariusz Zhukowski says something which I also admit like have like deep in myself that we should try to work till the end. We, going to retire is, is not an option. So, so somehow, <laughs> somehow this, this makes life more interesting and, and people are more like longer in a good shape. So, this is about Robert. He published a paper with a formalism which looks simple but has some interesting features. The formalism is the following that if we have annihilation creation operators, bosonic operators, and we consider only two objects, so like a kind of single particle reduced state and this linear contribution. So, so important thing is that there are no two daggers or two annihilation operators is just the simplified part. What we can have, we can have an evolution equation for these two objects which is closed. And this evolution equation, even though it's only for those two objects, contains a lot of, let's say, semi-classical physics because one can encode some kind of production, dumping processes, coherent sources, some kind of scattering effects. So, so apparently many can be described, many things can be described in the simplified picture, which comes from actually going to Kostakowski in the Sudarshan equation for this model. We call it the new state of the field. Another thing, actually I'm happy because today people like that they brought topics which were closed, which are close to the professor, but, but some topics are still left. One of them is Bogolibov transformation. So <laughs> I haven't heard today much about Bogolibov transformation, so let me show them here. As we all know, this works like we have a vector which takes both operators, not only annihilation, but also creation, and we have a linear transformation which somehow mixes them all together. To maintain the commutation relation, the transformation cannot be arbitrary, but somehow has a block structure. So so each block is, this is annihilation, annihilation, this is creation, creation, and these are the mixed steps which like, change one operator to the other. A thing which is maybe not so used in, in field theory, but can also be useful is if we consider an open system scenario in which we split 
these operators, like the annihilation operators into two sets. One set is our system, and another set is the environment. So somehow, this, this might be artificial, but it also might have some, some reason behind. And if we do this, then nothing changes structurally because computation relations are the same, but somehow we can say that each block is now split between system, environment, and some correlation times, and the same happens here. So, so the question which we were asking ourselves is when the Bogorlubov transformation fits into this reduced state of the field formally. So, so when it has, when, when the physics behind this is kind of simple. And it's not surprising that in the full, fully general case, the necessary and sufficient condition for the Bogorlubov transformation to fit into this, this, this description is that the part which mixes creation and annihilation vanishes. This is the only choice. And then, of course, in such a case, the evolution is Hamiltonian, there is no damping, there is nothing, so the picture is completely boring. But what is interesting is that if we consider this, this kind of splitting and decide to describe only the system part in this reduced form, so environment is environment, this is something we don't describe, we just describe the system, then apparently the same condition only applies to one block, which is not so severe, and also it's not, this is not a sufficient condition, it's just necessary. It can be sufficient under certain assumptions, like the environment needs to start in the vacuum state, and there are no initial correlations between the environment and the system, and most importantly, if we work that out, we have some, some rates, like this damping rates, and things like that, and they need to be constant with the Lindon equation. So for instance, the damping rates cannot be negative, they have to be non-negative. If this happens, then the formalism fits in, the Bogorlubov transformation fits into the kinetic equation we are discussing. Now, now we can go to the second part of, of this talk, which is the Casimir effect. This is, this is how we looked like in more or less 2010, when I was doing the first master and then the PhD project with the professor. This is this, this poster which was already mentioned today. So, the story was that, yeah, I, the, my, my master project was based on this paper about the Casimir effect, but Casimir effect in a bit different context. It's, it's not the usual treatment of this effect. The paper, when I see, I look at it after so many years, is I, I find it extremely well written, so I can only recommend to, to, to read it because Everything is explained in a very clean fashion. Then, my master project was about applying this formalism to the case of medium, which is moving with constant acceleration. The results were then published in Optics Communications afterwards. But, but what happened before is that at some point I had to wrap up my master thesis. And, and since I had many other duties, apparently at that moment that it didn't go so well and, and June was approaching, I, I decided to build my grandmother and then just sit two weeks and, and, and write the thesis because I had results, I just didn't have the thesis. I, I managed to write up the thesis and I also managed to, to draw it exactly 14 years ago. What you can see here is what I barely recall as our conversation at that day and translated to English because it was in Polish, which also tells you something about the professor. That was his reaction, more or less, because when I said, this is the, the gift, <laughs> okay, you can, you can read. So, then, what, what happened with this result is that I was sent to a conference in Cozumel. I will go back to this in a moment, but this is the, the slide which I prepared for this conference because I had a talk that was my first serious talk. And now it's a good moment to reuse this part of the slide. So, so I took something which was presented during the conference just to tell what the effect is about. So the effect is about a medium with constant parameters. So this is a kind of basic model. There is no dispersion, nothing like that. But the medium is moving. And when the medium is moving, the constant relations are modified with the velocity, and we assume that the velocity doesn't have to be constant, can also depend on time, and this changes the situation a lot. Actually, in this presentation, there was also something which apparently was not mentioned today so far, and since I'm the last speaker, 
I, I should mention, the Riemann Zilberstein vector, mm -hmm. another tool which is extremely close to the, the professor. So, so I was from the beginning I was introduced to use this this object only in my calculation, which which I was then continuing. So, so the, the point is that when we have the Zimmer Silverstein vector and we decompose it properly into into helicities and into the momenta, what we can do we can solve Maxwell equations for the amplitudes and then quantizing it appropriately and I'm not giving a blackboard presentation, I cannot provide the details, I just have to tell you that it can be done. And when it is done, the result is the Bobo-Libov transformation which takes initial, initially quantized field which is before the medium was moving with velocity which was at constant. It, this is transferred to, let's say, the final operators when we, the medium stopped moving with non-constant velocity. And indeed this is a bubble of transformation which depends on the solutions of the Maxwell equations with proper boundary conditions. Particles are created from the vacuum with densities which depend on those functions. The purpose of this thesis was to compare it with the Unruh effect. And, and in this effect we have that the radiation is like black body with temperature which depends on this constant acceleration, even though this is not the same effect. We found that one can introduce temperature which looks almost like in the Unruh effect and it more or less well described the, the behavior of the phenomenon. The, the most important difference is that we have n square minus 1 in, in this formula and n is the refractive index which means that in the vacuum it disappears. So, so this is the phenomenon which requires the medium to, to have matter in it. It cannot be vacuum. So, I, I told you I printed in Mexico these results. <laughs> I, I, was, I was really lucky because this was just when I started. One day the professor told me, look, we have spare money in the budget, we need to send you somewhere for a conference. But because we have some money, it needs to be far away. You need to find some place to go. And I quickly found this conference, Quantum Optics in Cozumel. I brought it as a proposal, but then the professor asked, okay, but we need to check who is there. He opened the list in the internet and said, ah, Volker Schleich, you are Jagerwald, all my friends, so yeah, you should go there. So, so I'm somewhere here, but some of you can recognize yourself maybe as a more in front. Okay, but let's go back to the problem which is in this in this talk. So so now since we have our reduced state of the field formalism and we know in which context it can describe the Bogolibov transformation. And we have the Bogolibov transformation which describes the dynamical Casimir effect. We want to compare both sides to see whether there is any additional conclusion we can infer. And of course, as before, we can do this in two different contexts, so in general and in this open <coughs> system approach, whatever it means for a moment. What it means, so, so what we need to understand is that even though we have many, the, the k vector has infinitely many values, in this problem, each wave vector decouples from the other one. So, so somehow what couples are, are two polarizations, which means we have 4 by 4 problem for each fixed k vector. And, and the other, so, so it comes in this, in this block structure. So somehow we have left-handed and right-handed photons and, and for each we have creation and annihilation. So, so the matrix is 4 by 4 and this matrix applies for, for each k vector. And this matrix looks like that. So in general, the condition which would say that all this block is zero would like tell us that these functions have to be zero. And, and these functions are zero only when the velocity is constant. So, so of course when nothing happens. Which means that on this global perspective this, this, this effect when photons are produced is, is, is quantum. It's like this kinetic description cannot capture it at all, which we should expect. But now let's think from a different perspective. We have 
two different polarizations, then let's pretend that one polarization is the system and the second is the environment. And we try to model this effect from that perspective looking at only one polarization. And what we discover is that only this has to be zero. But this is zero polarity. And the environment starts in the vacuum. And there are no correlations. And everything is fulfilled as should because the dumping rate is zero. And the, let's say, pumping rate, so to speak, describes the pair creation. And since pairs are created, they, they don't disappear. This is, this, is, this is positive. Which means that everything fits. So somehow, here, Nothing fits in this case. Every instance of this phenomenon fits into the description, which somehow means the following: that when we look at one polarization, we can model this this discussing effect like if they are photons pumped from a different polarization, which is our environment, and we don't know what is happening there. So, so somehow from the perspective of one polarization, we can describe to be that equation even. Like, like dynamical Casimir effect is kind of in that equation. But then the same applies to the other polarization. So, so when we take both together, each of them can be independently described that if photons come from, from the other polarization, but if we see that it happens for both, we understand that the source needs to be a different one. And, and the source is, is the vacuum. So of course, in total, the effect is, it is quantum. But, but somehow, Parts of this description can also be captured in this same more semi-classical fashion, and this is the result I wanted to present. Thank you very much, and I wish all the best. So now we have time for questions. Question or the comment? First the question. If you have a dielectric sphere which rotates, mm -hmm. will it uh, um, produce photons? Mm, it should because of rotate. Yes, 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 of course. Because because we, we, what we discuss is that. So okay, so the, the rotating the sphere but, but will rotating. emit photons. This well, means there was a paper which was about that. This, this was the paper by the professor which was before, even one year before. This was about rotation and about gravity, but there were two different ones. One is rotating and one is gravitating. So, so, and the formula is more or less similar. So, so oh, the answer is yes. 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 Okay, the, this dynamic Arcasimir effect, I heard talks about 30 years ago by other uh, scientists, which you didn't mention. So maybe, because I know that other people have been also working on of it. Of course. And I, I remember the conclusion of these talks that the fact exists, but it's, very, it's negligible. It's, you can, it's very difficult to detect it. Yes. The same, the same applies here. So yes. maybe this is the same effect. The, the point is, is the following. that, that the, Actually, so, so, so in this paper, which I shown as the starting point of, of, of my master project, it was it was called the dynamical Casimir effect, even though this is not the dynamical Casimir effect in, in this context, because in, in that picture, which is known since, since ages, people considered moving boundary conditions. Mm -hmm. So there was a different, different physical scenario, and, and, and this, this scenario is, is completely different. So this is not exactly dynamical Casimir effect, but qualitatively it, it looks the same. And also in the way that, that, that the effect is, is, is very weak in the same sense, of course. Because I don't see the difference. So the difference is subtle, it's in the mechanism. Of, of so, so. And, and this, this means that if one describes this, like, the spectra of photons created is, is not exactly the same. The, the, the difference are subtle. This is, from a coarse gain perspective, this is the same. That, that's why the title is Dynamical Casimir Effect. So, look at it. Um, Somehow I've missed what the system was that you were looking at. Somehow, I mean, I saw a lot of equations now, but yes. what is the problem that you're really solving? Yeah, the what, system what is, is me, what is moving, or, or what yeah, is the so model this, that is behind? So it? the system which, which was considered there and applies to the problem is a medium. It's just dielectric medium, which is moving. But 
but linear, it, but linear motion. Yes, linear motion. But this, but of, but as as when can quickly be discovered, and it's, it's obvious in a way oh, this motion like, cannot is be. Is it accelerating? Exactly. Or it is accelerating. And it this is infinite be, medium. It cannot move with a constant velocity because if it moves with a constant velocity, sure. nothing happens. It can accelerate. Actually, in this paper, as you can see, the world is it was oscillating. So, so in the first paper introduced this. The medium was oscillating, and this had a certain like formal reasons because when you oscillate, at some point you come to the state in which you can pretend it looks in a way that, like before, and, and, and then you can introduce creation equation operators again somehow in and out. So so this is this is a good description. So for instance, what, what we have to do in general is that we start with a constant motion, then we switch it on, something happens like the medium accelerates or oscillates, but then at some point it needs to go back to the same speed. So oscillation was good because it could go to the same speed. With my acceleration model, in the master project it was like it started with minus some velocity and then it came to, to plus this velocity. So somehow acceleration had to be also tuned to that. But, but, but of course the, 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 the medium has to move with no constant velocity, just to conclude again. I had the question about this uh, uniformly accelerated medium. Uh, is there a case in literature with dynamical Casimir effect observed in a medium which is a solid state, let's say, which is heated or cooled? So, could you consider this cooling or heating because it is a kind of mo movement inside the medium and the time it is? But it is the case of the system you would consider or you find in literature. This is problem. Because uh, for example, uh, uh, Boltzmann machines have the problem of cooling and Monte Carlo modified algorithms for finding some states of equilibrium and uh, following from this a lot of application areas. So my, my question is about medium which is heated or cooled and whether this is considered to be the case of accelerated medium or not. I would say that all, all these kinds of models, they are in a way ideal to show the effect. And, and, and this scenario, it's hard to imagine an idealized scenario which leads to that. It's rather because, because this, there is thermal noise. So, so somehow, so because it's, it's heating or cooling, so, so somehow this. The process, I think, in, in my opinion, is, is hard to, to isolate the essence of, of this say, movement or any other effect which would cause quantum fluctuations. It's rather there is too much of, say, not quantum, or like this, it's not vacuum, not vacuum physics in it. So, so I, 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 I'm not aware of anything like that, and the question is valid still, I think it would be very hard to describe in a similar way. From a purely phenomenological point of view, when you are heating, then of course you change the material properties of the system. They vary in time. And whenever you vary in time the material properties, like absolute new whatsoever, then you have the dynamical effect, Casimir effect. Yes. Because you are changing in time the properties of the system. That could be done in many, many mm -hmm. different ways. For example, when you have gravitating bodies, which we also studied, you have the effect of the Casimir type, because when the bodies are moving, then the, the effective epsilon and mu caused by gravity is also changing in time, and you produce photons. Of course, the number of these photons is totally negative. Yes, so, so, so I, I think this is much more concrete way of saying this. Yes, because what I also wanted to say that, that these models, they are, they are si simpler. They, they, for instance, don't consider kind of evolution of the medium in, in this aspect. So, so, so this is another factor which has to be taken into account. And in, in this case, certain things don't work so easily. But uh, I'm still intrigued about this problem. I'm sorry, I'm still intrigued. So the motion is non-relativistic. Well, this is. I mean, it's not like in the in the problem of uh, 
what more can you do? In, in the, in the, you know, when you have, when you do onward radiation and so forth, you have to go on the trajectory of proper time, and, and so you have to have a cinch and a cosh function, mm -hmm. which connects coordinate and time. Yeah, and so, but you didn't need to do this, right? Well, the, the point is that when you, so, so when you look at, and, and these relations, they depend on velocity, so, so it's not a priori specified whether it has to be, like given by relative equations of motion, even though well, in the trying, project one, one, we one use... Second, one second. I'm still trying to understand, in, in uh, UNDRO radiation, for example, you get an exponential distribution of probability of excitation of the atom. Yes. Now, that's the thermal, so that's why people say, okay, it's like an atom interacting with a thermal bath mm -hmm. of a given temperature, and temperature is yes. given by the acceleration. Now, you said, at some point, you said, oh, it's but, not the same because there's a square root of something minus, yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so the point is that the spectrum in this problem was completely different, but integrated over the momentum in a certain way. With they are, they are because they, they, with this, we go back to my thesis, so we cannot explain that now in full, but, but somehow when you integrate over certain, okay. certain momentum, you, you get the, the shape which is almost, like black body radiation, but it's not black body radiation because it's not the same, it's just resembles. Is there and an then, extra parameter involved? Exactly, and there is... And, so it's like great body radiation. Exactly, but the, and then the point is that indeed there is one scale which is given, which is given the temperature of that, in a way, like it's, it's, it's pseudo-temperature. So I wonder if this it. is related to the Bekenstein radiation, if you scatter photons from a black hole, then you're going to get radiation out that is not necessarily thermal, Mm -hmm. But it is what is called gray body radiation. Maybe that's what it's related to. Maybe in terms of wording, it's, 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 a, it's a good comparison. Even though, of, of course, this, this, was, this was a bit different thing. But yes, I mean, this, this sounds also as a good kind of explanation. So let's I propose to finish this session. So let's thank the professor again.